Hey guys, what's going on? This is Ipsec, and we'll be doing the Brainfuck Machine. And by doing, eh, we'll see how this goes. If you remember back in my October video, I said October was one of two machines I did not look forward to recording just because of the final step. Well, this is that second box, so I guess let's jump in. So, like any other box, we're going to start off with an end map with safe scripts, version enumeration, outputting in all formats, call it nmap, and the IP address, which is 10.10.10.17. I've already ran this, so we're going to look at the output nmap.nmap. And we see SSH, SMTP, POP3, IMAP, and HTTPS. There's no port 80, which is odd for hack the box. A lot of the boxes did have 80. This one only listens on HTTPS. So perhaps there's something there. And also, there's a lot of mail protocols, so there's probably something there. I'm much more comfortable with looking into web type exploits first, so that's where I'm going to start. If I knew a lot about Dovecot or Postfix exploitation, that's probably where I'd start, enumerate versions, etc. Since I don't see port 80 at all, I'm kind of curious in the like SSL cert information. We do see it gives the common name brainfuck.htb. This may be beneficial, so let us see. Going to 10.10.10.17, we have to accept the certificate. And we just get the blank Nginx page. If we go to robots.txt, not found. I think if you do a buster this, you won't get a single thing. So let's look at this certificate and see what happens. Ah, uh, not cookies. If you assert. So we know right off the bat the common name is brainfuck.htb, but let's see what other information is hidden within this certificate. Right now, in the issuer, we do see an email, orestus at brainfuck.htb. This is definitely going to be useful since we see a bunch of SMTP type stuff. We have a valid email to try brute forcing or other things with. Same information, and again, the common name we see is brainfuck.htb. Going down, see other things. The alternative names, so the certificate is also valid for www.brainfuck.htb and supersecret.brainfuck.htb. So let's add those in our host file. And I've already added them. So all I did was add an entry 10.10.10.17 and gave it the three DNS names. And that lets us type those into our URL bar. and check out if they're valid pages. And the last one is super secret. So we see a custom form here, and these pages are taking a lot of load, and WordPress. So I don't know what this is right off the bat, I do know a bunch about WordPress, so this is where we're going to be starting. The interesting thing here is the open ticket. This isn't normally on WordPress. The other thing we can do is start a WP scan. So WP scan is a WordPress enumeration utility. So if we give it WP scan, HPS, brainfuck.htb. It wants us to disable TLS checks. And when we start adding arguments, we have to add a dash U. Silly program, but it is amazing. While that's going, we do see that open ticket that I mentioned. We can go to this dev post, and we see a username admin. See if this is done. It is. So, we do see WordPress Support Plus Responsive Ticketing System Authenticated SQL Injection. Uh, we don't have a valid credential yet, so Authenticated is not going to be helpful to us. What I want to do is enumerate different users on this to see, hey, do we have like a guest or some other type of user that we can authenticate, then exploit this. So, I'm going to do WP scan again, add a dash H. And I do see it has a enumerate user option. So I'm going to do that. 
and that's I was trying to rename a window my bad so let's see let's see if there's any other exploits for this so uh, just copy this I guess search exploit And we see SQL injection, that's the one we were just looking at, a privilege escalation and multiple vulnerabilities. That's 2.0, so we'll ignore that. Let's look at this privilege escalation, since it doesn't say if it's a SQL injection or not, uh, authenticated or not. And it's also interesting, I'm guessing this 40939, 40939, the exploit db page isn't saying it's authenticated but our wordpress scan is saying it's authenticated so if nothing's here we'll go back and see if that sql injection is actually authenticated required looking into the privesc we see it odd proof of concept it's just giving us a html form post you can log in without knowing any password because of incorrect usage of the WordPress set authentication cookie. So it looks like this plugin is giving unauthenticated access to this admin ajax.php and we can set a username and say we're logging in from Facebook. That's my take on this vulnerability real quick. So let's try this out. V exploit.html uh, set paste. Okay, so what will we have to do? Well, first we'll have to change this to be the right URL. Username, let's see. WP scan did finish, and we have two users, admin and administrator. So let's just try it with administrator first, since it looks like both are here. Don't have to change that. Email. Uh, let's go at what we think may be valid. So let's just change this to admin and orestis at brainfuck.htb. Login, guest Facebook, that should be fine. So now we're going to python-m simple tp server. Go back to Firefox and let's go to localhost 8000. If we go to this exploit.html, click login. And not found. So this admin-ajax is under wp-admin. So let's fix that real quick. I probably wasn't reading something as I edited that. So go back. Refresh. Log in. And waiting. We'll see if this logs in. It's taking quite a while. Go back. Let's look at our source again. Make sure we didn't screw up while it is loading. No page. If we go back to brainfuck.htb, we do see, like magic, we are logged in. So let's see exactly what happened there because that is not descriptive whatsoever. So let's go to... Uh, edit preferences, privacy, clear, recent, everything, sure. If we refresh this, please don't be logged in. Okay, not logged in. So, what I'm going to do, enable proxy. That was just foxy proxy to make me able to switch between and back and forth from burp easily. Refresh, confirm we're going through burp now. So... Still listening on localhost. Host, 8000. Go to exploit.html. Forward, yes. Log in. 
send this to the repeater tab so we can easily see the response back from the server. And we see once we set this, the server is telling us, hey, set your cookies to this. And these cookies are the valid cookies of an admin. So that's what happened. That's why we don't see anything here, because all this page is doing is telling a browser to set the cookies of a logged in user. And we're back. So as admin user, let us check out the WordPress administration page. If we can edit any PHP file, we have a direct shell. The easiest way to edit PHP files in WordPress is through their templating engine. And this is taking a while to load. Is this the server or is burp on intercept? Nope. So just the server. Let's maybe we can just jump right ahead and do themes. But OK. Appearance, themes, uh, editor. This is where we can edit template files. And the, right off the bat, I notice you need to make this file writable before you can save changes. Checking other files around. Everything is not writable by whatever user is running this WordPress. So can't edit this file to gain code execution. The next thing I want to mention is the dev post said SMTP integration is ready, so one can assume this is some type of mail authentication to this ticketing thing. So going around, we can do settings, easy WP SMTP. And we see the username Orestus and the password down here. It is in uh, masked characters, so let's open up a developer toolbar with F12, inspector, Click on this thing, and we'll inspect this. We get a potential password right here. So copy, I think in our HTML. Let's go, we can kill this, creds. Did not copy. Uh, there we go, paste, there we go. So we can assume this is going to be SMTP creds for Orestus. Okay. So what can we do with mail creds? Well, let's load up a email client. I use Evolution, and there's probably a bunch of command line tools just to download a bunch of email, but we're not doing an exploit, so might as well just configure it. Uh, like we're doing it. So, organization, probably don't need. Let's see. Server. What ports was this listening under? Cat nmap dot nmap. It is 143 and 110. 143 there. So, imap plus is fine. Brainfuck dot htb. Username Orestus. Password, yes. 60 minutes is fine. Again, SMTP. Probably don't need this, but won't hurt. Brainfuck.htp. Count summary. Arrest us at brainfuck.htp. Next, apply. And let's copy that password again because we're going to need it. Arrest us. Paste this password, and if it worked, we'll authenticate and should see mail. So we do. Awesome. New WordPress site has been set up. Okay, we know that. And form access details. Hi there. Your credentials to a secret form are below. Oh, we got more creds. So copy this. Go into our creds, secret forms, Orestus, and paste that. And if you remember from our enumeration, we did see a secret form, and we just didn't bother exploiting it because we knew nothing about it. Now we have creds, so let's try logging in, Orestus, and the password. 
and it lets us right in. Awesome. So having access to the secret, super secret form, let us go to different pages. So we can open up development, SSH, and key. Let's see what's here. Development, test, okay, nothing important there. Close this. And let's read this. SSH access. Was upgraded to make use of keys, password logins disabled, <laughs> and we see a bit of a flame fest. One thing is, we always see Orestus, his signature, Orestus, hacking for fun and profit. So, going to the next post, key, we see everything is encrypted. So, the key thread is them opening up this encrypted thread. Looking at this, it looks like complete gibberish. You may look at this and be like, oh, this looks the same, but it changes every time. So even though it's the same number of characters, it's not the same throughout each post. That's because it's doing a cipher and the number of characters here is a bit different. So it's jumping here at different spots in the cipher. It's not cipher. I forget the terminology. Crypto is not my expertise. So this is where I may start making a lot of mistakes. I want to say something like a rolling cipher. So let's say it was encrypted with ABC. It goes like M plus A, Y plus C, B, A plus C, and it keeps going, keeps going, and then starts here. And because this is A, this one becomes C, and this has different number of characters, this ends on C, this now is A. May make more sense in a second. Let's hope I can explain this. The important thing, though, is this looks very familiar to a good old signature. And if you know anything about, like, World War II, you know that this is kind of like the Hail Hitler thing, which broke the Enigma machine. The Enigma machine's what the Nazis used to encrypt communication, and essentially it was a keyed visioneer cipher with a custom alphabet that would be rolling. Really fancy substitution, but the issue was it was vulnerable to kind of a known plain text attack because the, early in the day they would always transmit like the weather, which you can predict what the plain text will be from the weather, and there would be signed, Hail Hitler. This is signed, Orestus Hacking for Fun and Profit. So if we want, we can try to decrypt this and try to explain what's going on. So we have the plain text and the encrypted. Encrypted is that. Plain text will be this. So very similar, same number of characters. Oh, very similar because that was the exact same thing I copied. Copy. Paste. OK. Very similar. But how do we go from O to P? So the one-time pad pretty much adds P to O. Or, I don't know how to explain this. Let's work through it, and hopefully working through it will explain it to you. Uh, Python. So, we'll go in Python, and we will print the ordinal value of O. And we'll print the ordinal value of P. Okay, and we also want to know what the ordinal value of A is, 97, so let's just do this. I'm doing this because I care about what um, position the alphabet each character is. So to encrypt, we would add P to O. To decrypt, we subtract P from O. And it's a bit tricky to do this because you think you would just be like the difference between O and P is 1. So we'd go behind P1 and the character would be O. That's not how it works. So let's pull up our ASCII table. This explanation cannot be good. If this makes sense, it's going to be a miracle. So we're going to start at P and we want to go back 14 places. 
So going back P, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So B. So going back to our V, we have, uh, I have no clue what it's doing there. Recording? No, I don't want to do a macro. Okay. Uh, plain text, encryption, uh, key. So B. Now we'll do the same thing for I and R. So, R and I, and we want to subtract R from I, so starting at I, we want to go back 17 places. So we do this again, start at R. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wait, I want to start at I, right? Yeah, I start at R. So from I, we go back 17 places. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's like a modulus, so go to Z, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, R. So that one is going to be R. So we could keep doing this, but I'm going to do something to speed this up so I don't have to keep counting. And Rumkin has a lot of good ciphers or tools. So Google, Rum. I thought it was Rumkin. Uh, I could have swore Rumkin cipher. Yeah, here we go. And we're going to use his one-time pad, because that's essentially what we're doing right now. And we want to decrypt, I believe. So let's verify what we did. If we do I and R, we should get uh, R. OK, yep. So we are good. So if we do P and O, verify, we should get B. So we'll do E and E. A. Next one will be A and S. I. Then we'll do G and T. G, T, N. And you're getting the picture now. So T, I. T, I. Was it? No. N-I. F. And it's just, fuck my brain, fuck my brain, fuck my brain, constantly. But I don't, I don't want to waste time doing that. So we know the key. We can go to Visionaire. Keyed Visionaire. Let's see. Alphabet use there. That's fine. Passphrase. So I don't think I have to do anything for this alphabet key. It's been a while since I've done this, so bear with me. This video is going pretty long, so I didn't want to um, restart. Go to Keyed Visionaire. Your message is that. Passphrase, fuck my brain. And there we go. Please arrest us, hack and find a profit. So now we can decrypt the message, which means we can decrypt this URL down here. So let's see what this says. Come on, tabs. There you go, you stupid fuck. I hope you remember your password because I don't. We can download this RSA file. Whew. We are getting near the end of Brainfuck, but we got one 
very tough challenge ahead of us. So let's just move that IDRSA file into uh, this. MV star downloads ID RSA here. And the next step will be decrypting that RSA key. Because if we look at it, ID RSA encrypted. Yes. Awesome. Thankfully, I've already done this on the 1010 machine, so hopefully everyone's familiar. I'm going to breeze right on through this quickly without explaining too much. I'm going to cat the ID RSA file, put it to my clipboard, SSH into my cracking rig that has some graphics cards, uh, the Kraken. And I'm going to paste this ID RSA, go into my John directory. I'm going to run SSH and G to John on that ID RSA file to put in a format that John knows. If you're not using Jumbo John, then chances are you're just going to use SSH to John. I don't know the difference. I know this too, and I know this one works with Jumbo John. So give this a name. We'll call this Brainfuck to Crack. And let us run John. So dot slash John slash root Brainfuck to Crack dash dash word list equals slash opt word list rock you dot txt. And we see it cracks almost instantly. We have this three polaki. I don't know what that means. But let's go into our creds, add this sh key, and three polaki. Awesome. So let's try logging in. We'll do sh-i, idrsa, and our user probably arrest us at brainfuck.htb and it's thinking it's thinking did I type of that? I did not. It's my VPN VPN still up huh try this again unprotected private key file so chmod 600 id rsa login private key 3 palaki and we're in. So looking at the files, we have a debug.txt, encrypt.sage, a mail directory, output.txt, user.txt. So if we find mail, nothing interesting there. Let's look at encrypt.sage. And it's a script. Duh. We are opening root.txt, output.txt, debug.txt, doing some magic and writing a string. So we're taking what was in password.txt and writing it to output.txt right here. And we have debug writing P, Q, and E. Don't know exactly what this is yet, so let's just throw this into Google, just random strings to see if we can figure out what we're looking at. And we see a script that is almost identical here. Another Sage script. This looks familiar. This debug a bit different, writing different variables out. And we have RSA. So we know there's going to be some type of RSA attack. And I'm guessing you may, if you know RSA well, know based upon PQE. Not sure. So let's look at what those values are. We're writing P, Q, then E into debug.txt. So we have P and Q, about the same size. These are both prime numbers in RSA. And E, this is the exponent and ginormous. Generally, you're going to see this to be set at, I think, 65537. That is just the normal prime for this. And I may get stuff wrong here because crypto is not my expertise, but I believe this may be vulnerable to like Wiener's attack as well because the modulus of E is for the public key and modulus of D is for private key. And when the public key is ginormous like you see here, the private key is going to be small. So if this created a public key, we may be able to brute force the private key because the exponent for this is just small. Maybe, I don't fully understand 
Wiener's Attack. If you want to do more crypto stuff and get expert at it, I'd recommend Crypto Pals. Haven't done it, but I've heard great things. So, being the noob I am at crypto, my next step was to Google about P, Q, and E. So we're going to go uh, Google decrypt RSA given P, Q, and E. Because with these, we should be able to. We have security.stackexchange and crypto.stackexchange first. Let's go to both. This guy's kind of just explaining it. And this one gives us a nice script. And I love scripts. So we're going to just, whoops, try running this and see what happens. So last debug, open up a new window, v uh, decrypt. I already have a thing, so we'll just delete this v decrypt.py uh, set paste there we go so let's put our values in so we want to put p whoops not that hockey there we go and we want to do q And we want to do E, this number thing. Okay. And CT, probably ciphertext. So let's go back to our SSH. It's not responding. Come on. Just need to get the ciphertext out. Come on. There we go. Uh, catch output. As you can see, my SSH session is lagging. It's not a great sign. If we get this output, we should be good though. Come on, there we go. Awesome. Just enough. So, cat that ciphertext. Place that there. Okay. And now we're going to run this. And we get plain text, but it's a giant number. So we have to convert this number into ASCII. Easiest way, I think, is to convert it into hex and then convert it from hex to ASCII. So we have a Python interpreter. We'll do pt equals that number. And we can do xpt. So we see we converted that number into hex, but we have this L at the end and that 0x we want to get rid of. So I will do this to get rid of it. Check that. Yep. And then we can dot decode to hex, uh, from hex. And this should get us um, an ASCII string, if I type this correctly. Uh, odd like string, what did I screw up? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I screwed up. Let's type this again. So string hex pt two negative one, close that, dot decode hex. Do we need the print? On length string. I may be taking off too much. Let's see. Go back to our thing. Let's copy this ciphertext again. Maybe something screwed up in our pasting. V uh, decrypt.py. I think that was only 18, not 182 at the end there. That looks much better. 
So let's take this plain text and try this again. Uh, that was embarrassing. So string hex pass. Uh, we need not pass. PT equals that. String hex PT. Okay. This is looking better, guys. I'm not exactly sure what I did there, but I'm sure you'll find out in the video, and we're probably laughing when I made that mistake, if you noticed. Get rid of that L at the end in 0x dot decode hex. And there you go. This is the contents of root dot text. And I don't believe it was the password. I don't think you actually get the password for this machine. No, you don't. But you know it's opening root dot text and then taking that contents, encrypting, and writing there. Hopefully that made sense. Again, my apologies, I'm not a crypto guy, so just doing my best. If I made mistakes, let me know. Uh, yeah, take care.